I have this dream, this recurring dream, where I'm running in a forest, it's cloudy and there's fog everywhere. I can't see where I'm going. The trees are like skyscrapers, running, trying not to crash into them. Something keeps on following me. I can't exactly say what it is. It's not human, but it's not a monster. I stop running. I don't know where I'm headed or if I'm running away from a thing or towards it, but a slight push on my leg Manages, manages to wake me up. Just a dream. My mother was pushed off the third floor building of where we lived. I was only a baby, three months old. Infants, from the moment they are born, act like sponges. They absorb everything they see, feel, hear. I'm more scared of commitment than I am of death. I am unable to emotionally connect with someone who I care about because I'm scared. I'm scared of being left. I'm scared of letting someone, I'm scared of myself letting myself be vulnerable, and I would rather run than to, have to some, than to have to face something like that. I'm not afraid of death, but I'm afraid of not looking perfect all the time, and I'm afraid of being alone, because I analyze every sentence ever said to me, and then I reanalyze, and then I analyze my analysis, and before I know it, I have a full-blown panic attack, and it happens all the time. At least with death, it was a one-time deal. Parents are the ones who are supposed to love you and protect you with their lives no matter what, or so they say. But what if dad loses it and pushes mom over the railing? When I learned I was adopted by my aunt, I really didn't take the information in. I just let it slide, failed to process whatever emotions I had to. We lived in Mexico on the third floor of the building. My mom and dad fighting. Apparently, they fought often. There was yelling, violence, and my sister protecting my brother, and me inside my crib, listening, feeling, learning. I have one photo of my mother. Light brown skin, curly hair, almond-shaped eyes, classic red lipstick. She was gorgeous. She looked so happy standing there with a beer in her hand, smiling, posing for the camera, completely unaware of her impending departure. But the man who loved her, my father, killed her. I have my mother's charm and charisma, but I also have my father's blood. That dark blood, it runs through me, it runs through my body like electricity in a wild, wired cable. I wonder what I am capable of, what kind of pain I can cause with violence, without violence. But I keep my flame small, never letting the fire breathe. But I do have this thirst to know what it's like to be my father. There I am, running away in a forest. It's cloudy, there's fog everywhere. I can't see where I'm going. Trees are like skyscrapers. I'm trying not to run into them. Something keeps on following me. It's not human, it's not a monster. A slight push on my leg shakes me and manages to wake me up. Just a dream. People who know my story ask me, wouldn't you want to meet your father? I say no. I have nothing he wants or needs. And that's what I'm afraid of. Afraid of not being wanted, being rejected by my own dark bloodline. I already know what happens to people when my father pushes them away. My therapist once told me that a lot of my mental health issues came from my parents' constant fighting and physical violence while my mother was pregnant with me. Just like listening to classical music while being pregnant will make your baby into Steve Jobs, my parents were making their babies a mess of anxiety. One day in junior high, I was in PE, just changed into our gym clothes, waiting for a teacher to come out of the locker rooms. I stood alone because I didn't have any friends. This girl who bullied me teased me because I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I wouldn't say anything. She would talk shit in my face with her friends, calling me a loser, faggot, loner. They pushed me around. I just stood there quietly, holding back my tears, wiping them off if any happened to fall out. My mother had already taught me to be afraid of this girl, afraid of everything, but my father's blood was pumping through my body. I could kill this bitch. But they were right. I didn't know how to stand up for myself, so under my breath, I called her a bitch. I thought I had said it so she couldn't hear me, but she did. She told the teacher, I got sent to the principal's office. I broke down, 
in the office after telling them everything she had done to me, I was still in trouble for calling her a bitch. I've lost my mother, but I know I have gained an angel protecting me from death and ultimately for myself. The propensity to anxiety and fear my mother has passed down to me has protected me from harm my whole life. I'm running away in a forest. It's cloudy and there's fog everywhere. I can't see where I'm going. The trees are like skyscrapers. I'm trying not to run into them. Something keeps following me. It's not a monster. It's not a human. A slight push on my leg shakes me and wakes me up. Just a dream, I tell myself. Laying in bed, I realized that something had to physically push my leg in order to wake me up. This isn't a dream anymore. I feel a presence, and it was real. I could feel that it wasn't going to hurt me. It wasn't evil. I just knew that someone was there. Before I could analyze my thoughts, I felt it. I felt a cold hand press on my shoulder. Instantly, I felt a sense of relief because I know who it was. Give it up for Mr. Isaac Lopez, everybody.